My name is Albert Duncan. That's not my real name, though. <laughs> That's my stage name. My real name is Wes Urbaniak. And I just want to talk to you about this guitar a little bit. The top of this guitar, you'll see that there are a couple of knot holes used as accentuations. Um, the top of this guitar is a piece of uh, scotch pine from Vermont, um, which came in a log. They're built using a lot of recycled materials or reconnected. Um, this is a chunk of honey locust back and sides, which is pretty dense, pretty heavy wood. And then uh, the inlay here, the grafting is paduk, which is uh, becoming a bit more uncommon, but it's, it's really vibrant, beautiful color. And it's just a figured maple neck, um, rosewood fingerboard on here. And, but a lot of these materials on the inside are from 100-year-old pianos. And to take the piano, we get them, and we dismantle them, and then carefully, um, we used to carefully unwind all the strings, but now we actually just cut them all. And it makes a cool noise all the way through, and then uh, we recycle the metal and um, take all the spruce, and usually the sides are made out of a, a pretty decent hardwood and some of the other guitars are made out of those. The ash is usually the, the back and sides on those. But this is an interesting machine. It's all zebra wood base. It's got a Murado fingerboard and heel block. And this base is actually flat and thin, as you can see. A little bit different. Um, and it has an adjustable sound post in it kind of function is to be ultra light. So that is a, an elephant that is carrying the weight of the strings. An elephant is one of the totems and it shows up a lot in the instruments. This has the seventh string, so it's an octave um, with, uh, with the E. And it just, the way I pick it makes the sound come across as being circular to me. And this is called an elephant tour guitar piece of scotch pine. Those are natural holes from the, those bark beetles. This guitar has a sound side hole and all of the bracing from this guitar is is a hundred year old piano soundboard so it would be considerably older. The neck and stuff is stacked and laminated with koa and figured maple and the back of the headstock is myrtle wood and that's all koa. It's pretty messy sometimes. It's usually not too bad if I'm building one instrument at a time. And every time I get done building instruments, I think I'm only going to build one instrument at a time from now on. And then I start, and before I know it, it's like five or six. Like you saw that elephant tour guitar down there. This one is called the half elephant, and it's actually just a symmetrical version of of that guitar and um, that log that you just saw outside is where that came from those and then the sides on this and the back are going to be cherry that came from a friend's dad's place in new york there's lots of recycled stuff that happens here um the the back and sides of this ukulele 
are uh, Claro, but they came from like this horrible chopped off chunk of wood that I picked up in Portland. The top is actually a uh, fence post or, or chunks of fence that I, I took out. So it's cedar and it's pretty soft, but it had a couple of knot holes in and I build a lot with knots. I really like them. They're all, they get um, backed inside and then, and then utilized in a lot of ways. Uh, and you'll see like this one's a bit more extreme here. And this ukulele will be a 16th fret ukulele because sometimes I think, like I do lead work sometimes on a uke and it's nice to have access to those upper frets and they're kind of neat. And the, the back and sides of this are madrone. Because all the bracing inside of there is either from a ponderosa pine that fell up on the hills behind my house that I drug home or a hundred year old piano or chunks of pine or fir that we get. These will be like these knot holes and stuff. They'll become tops of bases and they are for that. And I actually think I'm about to build an upright with, with those like that, that effect. So that's, that might be coming at some point. Finished guitar. And you can see how there's natural knot holes in it. And then there's also from, from the beetles that, that turn the pine blue. But it makes for pretty decent guitars, you know? And this has got the butternut um, back and sides. And you can see where the bark exposure and stuff is maintained and kept. And then it's, it's just backed up on the inside. So I bend on an iron and a torch. Like everything is like really a lot built by hand without um, without too many jigs or forms. Like, and... There's so many decent woods that we can use for building instruments and I really wanted to represent that um, with that violin that's going to come out and then with this ukulele where the entire body of this ukulele is from right here um, in the Billings area which is just Montana so uh, it's not only from Montana it's like grown from Montana in like several ways. Uh, the only other piece to it is the chunk of the ash from the piano sideboard. And it's, you know, it's... It just goes to show that like suitable woods don't have to come from super far away or be super crazy. And um, yeah. Uh, but after building this uke, I think it'll be the only one that's shaped quite like it is, um, which is normally uh, a reference to a mandolin body and how I build them, but I just tapered the sides over.
Why the whispers falling in my ear? Sure, some they are about me. But there is romance in the dirty. Throw that shade, you're grateful in this heat. Throw that shade on me. Bring your shovel if you want to. They're Are you feeling holes for digging graves? Are you feeling holes for digging graves? It's okay, I suppose, to feel the sadness. A lot of the choices that we've made. Well, Mr. Bischoff, so you're a luthier. Is it luthier? 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 Luther. Well, luthier. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, you've been building guitars since 1951? It was a couple years uh, after that, okay. uh, 75. 75, oh. Not 18. Okay. okay. 1975. Uh, and repairing. And repairing? Not just building. Also repairing horns too, right? Weren't you? I you have a uh, I have a, a, a background in uh, band instruments. My father was a band director, oh. and uh, actually, I could easily say my first uh, music teacher. He had me pitch matching, ear training, probably as young as five years old. I played saxophone, and uh, later on, I worked on woodwinds, saxophones, flutes, clarinets. I did have some uh, original training, and that was with the violin family. Okay. So violins, violas, cellos, string basses. I learned how to uh, work with wood that was involved in musical instruments and translated that into guitars. My guitar work has all been really just by figuring it out. This next year will be 45 years for me. I'm always surprised that you never have seen it all. Mm -hmm. There's always something new, which means you have to be able to solve that problem. The first guitar you made, what was it made out of? Uh, well, I tried to keep it simple. I thought I'd try to emulate something that I at least had seen, which was a Martin-style guitar, C.F. Martin. Okay. I used that design, and I just used a simple Sitka spruce top, mahogany back and sides, and then just tried to figure out how to put the parts together. And in 74, 75, there just wasn't the kind of information available that there is now. And what I found was a blueprint. Blueprint does not tell how something is put together, only where the pieces are and the dimensions of those pieces. They do not say how to make those pieces, how to fit those pieces, how to glue and clamp those pieces, how to sand it, it nothing. It's just the shape. The instrument is still a functioning, viable instrument. I have it in the shop. It's kind of uh, been uh, retired. Uh, by number 10, 
I thought, well, I needed to do something that kind of exemplified my work, showed what I could do, what I was doing at the time. Kind of a, a bit of a walking billboard, where the first one was, you know, everyone was, ooh, ah, you made a guitar. Yeah. But it was pretty rough, it, and I kept going, and it started improving, of yeah. course. Because each that was the impetus to get going on the next one. What can I do to improve it? Um, yeah. Can we take a walk into your shop? and uh, Let's go do tour? it. I'm okay. going to take my uh, Sunday Mr. Gessel Melodica oh. Tour uh, coffee cup with me, if that's okay. Ah, that gives me great gratitude. First guitar I made in 1975. Five. I believe I probably strung it up in about June of 1975. Uh huh. And this, uh, the wood on this one? Uh, that's a Sitka spruce okay. on the top, and uh, the back and sides are uh, Honduran mahogany. Oh. Uh, and stained. That's okay. why it looks browner. It looks almost kind of like walnut. Yeah. Yeah. And the neck, of course, is uh, is, is mahogany as well. Yeah. And it's a kind of a goofy vine inlay. I, uh -huh. Apparently, I wanted a challenge right out of the box. I guess you did. Yeah. And then um, the headstock, I see you did do some changes. <laughs> yeah, between... that was the only one of that <clears throat> shape. Okay. Looking for something... Well, you can kind of, uh, I, I was living in Red Wing, Minnesota at the time, and you can see the little wing on the top, and it was supposed to kind of represent the wing. Okay. Just waking up from being in hibernation, but it sounds amazing. The uh, latest guitar, 2019. 2019, uh... Less than a week old. Still not allowed to out of the shop. No, uh, still not allowed. Customer has not played it yet. Oh, I get to play it for the customer. Yeah. Uh huh. But uh, uh, because we saw him the other night uh, during a performance of Sunday, Mr. Gessel, we had uh, permission. This one is a spruce top as well. Same kind as my first one, but the rosewood back and sides come from a different country. This comes from Madagascar. Madagascar, okay. Uh, oh, at, right, actually the first one was a, a, a mahogany. So this is yeah. a, a Madagascar rosewood, uh -huh. and it's a really hard much more dense wood than mahogany yeah. is. So this, these are, they call match sides? Book match. Book match. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So do you cut these pieces on half? Uh, I have, okay. but n not for, uh, not normally because I buy my wood from suppliers who supply to builders. Mm -hmm. Christopher's gonna be very happy. 
chefs talk about a butterfly cut of pork chop. Okay. Like and that's they, they take a pork chop, cut it in half, yeah. and that's how you get that. Okay. It's uh, book matched tops. You find it on fine furniture uh, and instrument wood is very common okay. that way. Now I heard that, you know, that people say that it, the guitars are made that way because this wood is pulling against this wood and it vibrates and that's what makes your tone. But is there such a thing as a one piece top? Well, uh, interesting question. This particular piece of wood uh -huh. on that guitar and uh, its uh, 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 <clears throat> sibling guitar over here, they were mm -hmm. both made at the same time. The uh, top wood, spruce, was gifted to me by a customer who moved to Alaska in the mid-1980s, uh -huh. purchased this wood uh, for a different purpose, but realized that it was good guitar wood and saved it for me oh. for 35 years and oh. gave it to me this summer. Uh, these are two-piece tops, but I actually have a piece of wood in my shop here <clears throat> that is wide enough to make a one-piece top. I have never seen a one-piece top. Uh, it, it would be for a 15-inch guitar, which is what these what are. Uh -huh. uh, and. I've never seen one. I've seen violins. I've seen mandolins that were one piece, much smaller instruments. Yeah. The the thing is to be able the, this board represents about 800 years of growth. You can get in there and even see the grain of the wood. That's called quarter sawn. And uh each one of those lines is a year. I, I have never seen a one-piece guitar top. Oh. It's very hard to find a yeah. tree this big. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So, so better... pretty, talk about special pieces of wood. Yeah. So I better... we, we have it here at Bischoff Guitars. So I better get my order in soon to have the first Bischoff one-piece top. So uh -huh. these two guitars, they are uh, siblings. Maybe, sibling, maybe twins, but not identical uh, twins? It's twins, but not identical twins. Yeah. Exactly. So the same top from the 30-year-old? Uh, yes, the, the same wood, but uh, back and sides are different. Okay, so... This is uh, uh, the one on your right is uh -huh. uh, Indian wood. Okay. Indian rosewood. Mm -hmm. And then the Christopher's is uh, Madagascar. Madagascar rosewood. It's a okay. little little more brown and the grain the is, is different. Pretty. It's pretty. Well, they both are. Exact same dimensions. Okay. Uh, and when you tap tone the body, they actually have exactly the same tap tone, same pitch. Uh-huh. Which yeah, just okay. kind of happened. Madagascar rosewood. Ditty here. does feel special. I don't know what it is. You not only build acoustics, but you do acoustoelectrics. Right. This is a, an instrument that I, my concept, uh, there, there are some other companies that have actually come out since I designed this in the oh. mid-90s. Uh -huh. uh, but the internal structure is uh, my design. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, it uh, has uh, several different features that that these other uh, companies uh, don't offer. Okay. And uh, so, is the bracing the same as an acoustic? No. Okay. No, it, that that's the whole thing. The the internal structure is is completely different than okay. an acoustic guitar. I see. Yes. And is there a, a block that goes down the middle? There there is a a partial block. So okay. So the generic term for this guitar is a semi hollow body. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this is all solid rosewood. It is solid rosewood back at uh, top, back, and sides, which is 
pretty unusual. Pretty unusual. And special for, for a special customer. Because <laughs> uh, I've never seen a salad rosewood top. See, pickups were made just up the road. They were made uh, by a friend of mine, John Gallup, yeah. in a dog town Custom Shop is the name of his company. Each one uh, is uh, is handmade for per order. Yeah, he made those pickups for that guitar for you. And I've heard that he also raises bees and makes his own beeswax. He, uh, right, uh, electric guitars, uh, the very fine uh, wire in there, which is about the thickness of a human hair as it gets wrapped around there, in order to stabilize that, you often dip it in hot wax or hot yeah. paraffin. Okay. He his mixture of paraffin also includes beeswax from his own ah. his own apiary. <laughs> yeah. And uh, um, I also uh, pressured you into putting a Bigsby. Yep, that was the first. <laughs> the first. <laughs> Customers come up with uh, crazy ideas, and sometimes you got to figure out whether they're going to work or not. Yeah. That one seemed like it could work, so. Yeah. We want with that. Yeah, but a lot of people ask me, like, how does it stay in tune with the Bigsby? Well, uh, one thing is there's a, a graphite. Yes. Um, saddles. Saddles here. In the bridge. Which are also um, work as a pickup as well. So yeah, a each one of those has, a, has a, a, a contact in there. Yeah. And picks up the vibration. And then um, a guitar cohort of mine in uh, Seattle uh, suggested to get this thing called a string butler to keep the strings going smoothly and straight across the nut, which also help, helps in uh, this not going out of tune. Yeah. And now this one is a baritone guitar, so it's tuned down uh, to B. Yeah. Uh, fourth lower. This is very nice. And this is um, uh, for sale. Uh, it is, uh, so. which I could be contacted through. Uh, you can Google search Bischoff Guitars. You find me that way. There's a website, yeah. uh, Facebook page, Bischoff Guitars. You, you know, Claire, oh, we forgot. We got to show you your ukulele. Well, I would love to show you my ukulele. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me get that out quickly. <laughs> And Gordy's wife, Alice, does some of the inlay design. It was my request to have a little fairy playing an ukulele. And so she designed that. I uh, cut it out of pearl. Uh, this is, uh, the top is made out of uh, reclaimed redwood. And the back and sides are uh, made out of koa wood. Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah.